This off-grid homestead is powered by the most awesome micro hydro system. It's, it doesn't even seem like an off-grid power system. Check this out. <gasps> no way! Oh! <laughs> Do you want to see a stream engine? Yeah. There it is. That is the heart of it. That's the magical thing that makes everything work. Really? Yeah, that's it. That little guy right there, he's a stream engine. Right there, stream engine, and it's from these guys. Energy systems and design. Look at that. Made in Canada. New Brunswick. Wow. Yeah. And they're good guys. They like, they're still there, and they're engineers, and they'll answer your questions. And this product has been running nonstop for 15 years. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Probably... Don't touch it. Yeah. Yeah. But it probably... It's like a really, really fast potter's wheel right now. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> so it's got two nozzles, but actually you don't, you don't need to have them both turned on. And in fact, one of them is turned off right now. I can turn it on. Let's see what happens. Because when you open the nozzle, you you reduce the pressure, so you get more flow, but you reduce the pressure. So it's not a perfect, you know, not necessarily at the perfect balance point. So either way, with that open, it's now producing about 13 or 1400 watts. Wow! So Continuous, non-stop, 24/7. Explain to me how this works. Where does the water come in? Well, these are two two parallel pipes. Okay. So it's not necessary. Let's just consider this one. It's got the main pipe coming in. It splits off and goes up through here and into the turbine. And then the other side of it comes up and over and into this side. And yeah, you don't need both nozzles on. And like if you don't need the power, you just, you can shut it off. So I'm going to shut this one off. And the pressure, this thing is not totally right. I think it's actually closer to 45 PSI, huh. but, but whatever. And that's it, look at this. It's a pretty tidy little setup, right? Yeah, totally simple looking. Wouldn't it be a shame to just have too much power all the time? What would we do with all the extra those power? hot showers? Ugh, hot showers, like nonstop. We should go look at the intake because that's that's where this meets nature, right? That's where the, the stream is. And uh, we haven't been up there for a long time, so it's probably overgrown a little bit. Let's go have a look.
Here it is, we're at the intake. And this box right here, this old wooden box, is like the settling pond. So water's coming in from in the main channel. This ensures that the water going down to the house is clean. And we're actually gonna clean this thing out. We're gonna clean out this silt. We can open up this uh, gate at the end of that rope and flush this box out and clean it all out. We're about 800 meters from the house in total pipe length and about 30 meters of elevation. And you have to do your own research on hydro, but hydro is all about the combination of flow rate versus pressure. So you can have less elevation, but you're gonna need a lot more water. Or you can have a really, if you got really steep country, you could have a little pipe with a little bit of, you know, gallons per minute, but super high pressure. This one, ah, it's kind of in the middle actually. We are going to open the gate and flush it out. Oh, look at it go! Now we blocked the intake, and now it's actually draining and flushing it all up. And by blocked, I mean like blocked. We just made it really noisy. So the intake is kind of blocked, but leaking quite a bit. But it's blocked enough that the box is draining. So now we can actually see the screen inlet to the pen stop. So right there in behind that screen is the pipe going down to the house. piece of technology in the woods out here, eh? In hydro generation, they call it the trash rack. The big screen and it collects all the debris that might want to go through. This tiny creek looks just gentle and idyllic. Yeah. But I give it a couple feet to fall and it suddenly turns into like a boiling cauldron. Yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Yeah. So the water that's being flushed out of there, it just daylights over in this ditch. So look at that, there's nothing up there. But the drain pipe comes uh, comes out of the ground there and then... So every year this thing gets flushed out and keeps that intake nice and clean so the house is getting clean water. Because besides running the turbine they also have gravity pressurized water in their house. And of course they want nice clean water. Okay, and now we're letting this thing fill back up a bit. I wonder how many bodies are at the bottom. What? Doesn't it seem like the place where you'd find a body or like Down at least there. A, or at least like a sneaker with a foot in it or something. Oh. <laughs> okay. Filled back up, all silt free, and we're gonna flop the flushing gate back. Then we'll probably go eat toast or just leave some lights on in the house for no good reason, or maybe have another hot shower. Not sure yet, maybe all three. This is an amazing setup. This is not your typical off-grid solar 
where you kind of scrimp and save and you know for us when it's sunny we get to use the toaster and in the summer we have excess power and in the winter we don't this system is it's so different this system has constant power almost all year round only sometimes in really cold weather when the when the creek is freezing uh, is the reduced power but otherwise it's full steam all the time and instead of figuring out you know what loads you can use what you have to figure out with this system is how do you get rid of the excess power so this guy called a solar controller but how he's actually being used is to maintain the voltage below a certain level so right now it's at 52.5 ish volts and this thing will maintain that voltage by turning on the electrical heating element in this hot water tank. So if the voltage goes any higher, this guy turns on the hot water tank. And so the hot water tank, <clears throat> by consuming electrical power, maintains the voltage when it's generating too much, but also uh, provides hot water the whole house you have hot water like for free kind of like as a bonus but if you're still not using enough then the hot water tank can get too hot so it needs a little protection device and that's what this little tiny guy does so he's checking the temperature in there 43.8 degrees right now Celsius and if it gets too hot he'll open up this valve here and literally dump hot water outside. I know. It's terrible. Uh, but that's a safety thing. You don't want your hot water tank to blow up. Pretty cool stuff. If you've got the right terrain, if you've got running water, if you've got a hillside with an elevation, it can be amazing. Amazing. You can have too much power. But <laughs> you can tell, right? There's a fair bit of infrastructure. Like, compare it to solar, it, un, unskilled you can still install a solar system in you know a few days or a week or two and with some help it's not too hard and it doesn't require hundreds of meters of underground trenching and all sorts of waterworks and then an intake infrastructure and a turbine so it's a lot more capital it's a lot more effort up front so it's uh, you know it can be good it can be bad it it's definitely amazing <laughs> If you have, uh, you know, if you have a long-term plan for a property and you have hydro potential, it seems like a pretty good deal.